نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يحده الله فلا مدل له وما يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده رسوله وبعد خير الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We begin by praising Allah We praise Him We seek His help And we ask for his forgiveness we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequences of our evil actions and I testify that Allah alone is worthy of being worshipped that Muhammad may God's peace and blessings be upon him is the slave of Allah and his messenger the best speech is the book of Allah the Quran the best way is the way of Muhammad may God's peace and blessings be upon him and the worst of all the affairs are the newly invented matters in the religion and all the newly invented matters in the religion are misguidance all the misguidance is going astray and all the going astray is in the fire my dear brothers and sisters may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on you all today we have gathered here to talk about the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and indeed this is a lofty topic it is a great matter and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to facilitate us in being able to convey something that insha'Allah will help us to grow and to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be true followers of the way that he has revealed to his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all those years ago all those centuries ago when Allah in his infinite mercy and his absolute wisdom sent his last and final messenger a mercy to mankind the best of all the created beings Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he sent Muhammad to all of mankind but at that time specifically he was dealing with the Arabs a people who worship 360 idols amongst them also were Jews and Christians 
But these were a pe people who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They believed in Allah's existence. They believed in His Lordship. And amongst them were some who claimed that they loved Allah. They said, we love Allah. And today you will find many. You will find Jews. You will find Christians. You will find Muslims. Making the same claim. We love Allah. And when they made this claim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah of the Qur'an, the verse, the sign that is known as the verse of muhabba, the verse of love. In this verse of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave a criterion. He gave a means through which and by which we can distinguish, we can know between those people who truly love Allah and those people who only make a claim. They say something with their mouth that is not true in reality. Kun, Allah told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to say, Kun, in kuntum tahibun Allah, fatabiyuni yahbibkum Allah. Say, if it is true that you love Allah, follow me. Mean, follow Rasulullah, follow the Messenger, follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Then, then Allah will love you. And Allah will then forgive you your sins. For Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. So, loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and sisters, may Allah have mercy on you, is conditional. Allah does not accept your claim of loving Him or my claim of loving Him. Unless that claim is backed up by the appropriate action and the appropriate action the correct action is following following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam then only will Allah accept your claim that you love him and if you truly love him you will follow his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and then Allah then Allah he will love you. And then Allah will forgive you your sins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He also told us in the fifth chapter of the Quran, in the 52nd verse of the Quran, O you who believe, in Surah Al Ma'idah, O you who believe, if any of you turns back, from his religion Allah will bring a people whom he will love and they will love him humble towards the believers stern towards the disbelievers fighting in the way of Allah and never fearing the blame of the blamers this is the grace of Allah which He bestows on whom He wills. And Allah is all sufficient for His creatures needs all knower. And it's important to note also that this verse, this 52nd ayah of the Quran, sorry 54th ayah in the Quran is Preceded by a reminder, a warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O oh, you who believe, take not the Jews and the Christians as awliya. 
What's this word mean? Awliya. It means close allies, friends and protectors. Allah warns us not to take the Jews and the Christians and indeed any of the disbelievers to be your awliya, your close friends, your allies, your protectors. Don't take them as your awliya. They are but awliya one to the other. And Allah warns us, if any amongst you takes them as awliya, then surely he is one of them. Verily, Allah guides not those people who are moon wrongdoers. What a severe warning. Allah is telling us, don't take these people as your friends. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, be careful who you take as your friend because you will take your religion from your friend. If you take the Jew or the Christian or the unbeliever as your close friend, your protector, your ally, then you are one of them. And Allah warns you. He warns you. And then Allah describes the people who love Him. And He warns us, brothers and sisters, as if He is talking about us today. If you turn back from your religion and look how the Muslims are turning away from their religion. If you turn back from your religion, you must know you must know that Allah does not need you and He does not need me. Allah does not need you and He does not need me. He does not need you to pray five times a day. He does not need you to fast. He does not need you to give zakah. He does not need you to struggle and strive to make His word the highest. Rather, we are in need of Allah. We are the ones who need Him. We are the ones who are relying upon Him because Allah, He is al Hayul Qayyum. He is the ever-living and He is the self-sufficient one. So if we don't take upon ourselves the task and the duty and the obligation to be Allah's worshippers and we leave the religion of Islam then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to lose anything from that rather he warns us that he will take us away destroy us remove us and Allah will merely raise up another group of people a different group of people who will not be like you and me who will not be ungrateful whose hearts will not be closed to the truth, whose eyes will not be blinded to the reality. No, Allah, He will raise up another group of people. And these group of people, Allah, He describes them. That He will love them. He, Allah, will love them. Oh, brothers and sisters, may Allah have mercy on you. For Allah to love you, did we think about this? Did we think of the reality of this? What it means for Allah to love you? That Allah should love you? How we crave for the love of people we admire. How we crave for the love of our husbands or our wives or our mothers or our fathers or whoever it may be. So how would be the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he described those people whom Allah loves 
and what will happen to them because when Allah loves someone he calls the angel Jibra'il he calls the angel Jibra'il he says oh Jibra'il I love such and such person and when Allah tells Jibra'il Jibra'il calls the angels the inhabitants of the heavens and he says to the angels the angels the thousands upon thousands upon millions perhaps of angels that Allah loves so and so and then the angels convey this to the inhabitants of the earth even the creatures and the animals that Allah loves such and such person until the love of this person becomes established can you imagine that Allah mentions you your name my name our names to Jibra'il the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us so Allah he says that if we do not want to follow his religion then Allah will get rid of us we are going to be the losers we are going to be the ones who suffer and Allah he will bring another group of people whom he loves and they will love him he will love them and they will love him and then Allah describes their qualities the qualities of these people whom he loves and the quality of these people who love Allah Allah mentions their qualities number one they are humble towards the believers humble kind gentle and soft to the believers this is their characteristic as was Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kind and gentle towards the believers soft and forgiving overlooking their faults merciful to them this is the first quality humble towards the believers and stern hard against the disbelievers it's the other quality not only kindness towards the believers but stern towards the disbelievers and their other quality is they fight they expend their time their property and even they are ready if it comes to it to expend their lives for Allah's religion for the sake of Allah to make his word supreme so they fight against their own souls their own selves they fight with their time their property their money even their lives for the sake of Allah and their other quality and this is amongst the greatest of their qualities is they are not afraid of people they don't care what the criticizers say they don't care what the blamers say look at ourselves brothers look at ourselves sisters today look at us Muslims today do we fit this description? do we fit this description? but now today you find the Muslims so apologetic so afraid of what the unbeliever will think about them we have heard of some people writing in their newspapers women should go and work in McDonald's because we don't want the unbelievers to think bad things about us Muslim women subhanallah is this nothing except fearing the opinion of the unbelievers and this is one example of many upon many upon many we find the Muslims 
harsh and intolerant to each other but kind to the unbelievers the other way around and as for fighting jihad whether it is of the soul or the tongue or the hand it is almost non-existent indeed we have reached the stage about which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described that when you hang on to the cow's tail and you contend yourself with agriculture and you deal in ina which is a form of small form of usurious transaction and hanging on to the cow's tail and contending yourself with agri agriculture this means you just contend yourself with your daily life your nine to five existence so when you hang on to the cow's tails and you contend yourself with agriculture and you deal in ina and you abandon jihad the struggle to make Allah's word supreme when you abandon that then Allah will humiliate you at the hands of your enemies and he will not lift it from you until you return to your deen until you return to your religion because when you have reached this stage that the Prophet ﷺ described you have in fact reached the stage when you have abandoned your deen you have abandoned your religion and you have become those people whom Allah will remove and surely Allah soon will bring another group of people whom he loves and they love him kind to the believers harsh to the disbelievers striving and struggling in the way of Allah and not afraid of what this one will say and that one will say and not afraid of the criticism of this one and of that one they will be proud of their religion proud of being Muslims proud of everything that Allah has revealed in this book they won't be embarrassed they won't need to make excuses and they won't be afraid to stand up for the truth and then Allah this is the grace of Allah that he bestows upon whom he wills not randomly but Allah bestows his grace upon those people who want it who seek it who strive for it and Allah tells us at the end of this a very beautiful thing that Allah is all sufficient for his creatures needs he is sufficient to provide for us he is sufficient to care for us and our families a reminder brothers and sisters because very often what holds us back from obeying Allah what holds us back from sacrificing for his cause is our attachment to the world and our thinking that oh if I do this I will lose everything but do we not believe that Allah is sufficient for us for our needs Allah reminds us of this and why does Allah mention kind to the believers harsh against the disbelievers why does Allah warn us and mention don't take the Jews and the Christians as your friends and protectors why because the most hateful thing in the sight of Allah the most hateful thing in the sight of Allah is not murder it's not rape it's not drinking alcohol it's not stealing it's not fornicating it's not these things the most hateful thing in the sight of Allah is disbelief the most hateful thing in the sight of Allah is that people reject faith in him is that people set up rivals to Allah and make partners with Allah even though he is the creator and the sustainer of all things this is the most hateful thing and the most beloved thing in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that the human being should have faith in Allah 
worship him alone and follow his divinely revealed religion so this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us because the unbeliever will only lead you to that which is most hateful to Allah they are upon something which is the greatest tyranny the worst oppression the greatest sin that Allah will never forgive he will never forgive shirk he will never forgive that rivals and partners should be made with him he will never forgive it any other sin he will forgive if he wishes but shirk he will never forgive unless you repent from it but if you die upon that Allah will not forgive it because there is nothing more hateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we look in Surah Al-Bayyanah إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَحْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ فِي نَارِ جَحَنَّمْ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ شَرُّ الْبَرِيَةِ That's what Allah describes them. Verily those who disbelieve from the people of the book and the mushrik Mushrikina, the idol worshippers they will be in the hellfire altogether and they are Sharul Bariya the worst of all created beings there is not a thing in existence not a worm not a snake not a dog and not a pig the one who has disbelieved in Allah and made partners with him is worse than the cattle worse than the most insignificant creature this is how Allah describes them because they have committed the greatest wrong the greatest error the greatest misguidance so brothers and sisters to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be loved by him you must embrace iman you must embrace true faith and you must be far away from every single aspect and every single type of disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single type of shirk and making partners and making rivals with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you must manifest in your life the reality of the worship of Allah the reason for which we exist the purpose of the creation of the human being وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ insa إِلَىٰ لِيَعْبُدُونَ that Allah did not create the human beings and the jinn except to worship him alone this is the message of every single prophet the call of the messengers was fundamentally what? to be nice to have good manners to obey your parents not to drink yes these were some of the manners and the morals to which they called to but fundamentally this was not their message fundamentally their message as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَلَّقَدْ بَأَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ إِمْ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولٍ أَنْ نَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ وَاجْتَنِبُ الْتَغُودِ That Allah did not send to any nation a messenger except that this messenger called people to worship Allah alone and to abandon the worship of all the false gods. So we find that there are two signs two signs for those people who love Allah and whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them the first sign is jihad fi sabilillah that they struggle and strive in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this jihad is of three types the first is the jihad or the struggle because the word jihad means to struggle or to struggle to the utmost of your ability is of three types 
the jihad against yourself your desires this is the first this is the struggle to make yourself sincere to Allah your actions sincere to him and to make those actions correct according to what Allah has revealed the second is the jihad against the hypocrites and the third is the jihad against the unbelievers and there is another one that is the jihad against a shaitan but the jihad against a shaitan is similar to the jihad against yourself and these different forms of jihad have different characteristics which we won't go into now the second quality of those people whom Allah loves and they love him is ittiba rasul following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and as we mentioned the first ayah we mentioned kul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah fatabiyuni yahbibkum Allah this is one of the great signs of those who love Allah and whom Allah loves them it is following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Huraira related from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah the Most High has said whoever shows enmity to a friend of mine I shall be at war with him my servant does not draw near to me with anything more beloved to me than the obligatory duties and my servant continues to draw near to me with the optional actions so that I shall love him so when I love him I am his hearing with which he hears his seeing with which he with, with which he sees his hand with which he strikes and the foot with which he walks were he to ask something of me I would surely give it to him and were he to ask me for refuge I will surely grant it to him and Bukhari collected it look at this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there is no way to draw close to Allah except through acts of obedience those actions obligatory actions that Allah has made and ordered us with and we increase upon those actions doing more extra deeds extra prayers extra fasts until we reach a stage where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we draw closer and closer that Allah says and Allah loves that person and then Allah describes the condition the state in which this individual reaches it is a state that Allah describes of pure and complete submission so that when Allah says that he hears I am his hearing with which he hears in other words this person does not listen to anything except what Allah loves what Allah approves of when Allah says I am his seeing with which he hears it means that this person does not look except at those things which Allah loves and Allah approves of when he walks when he strikes it is not except those things which Allah loves and approves of so it describes the condition of this person as being in complete and total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the perfect worshipper of Allah and this per person therefore succeeds and has achieved the purpose of life and this is the one whom Allah loves and we understand therefore and we must understand but the reality of muhabba of love for Allah cannot be through mere words through mere emotions that we claim 
It can only be manifested and made true through actions of worship that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how is it that we will know how to worship Allah? Through what and through which means do we achieve the knowledge of what it is that Allah loves and what it is that Allah is pleased with? We only know this through what He has revealed in the Qur'an. And this Qur'an in turn is explained by the sayings and the teachings of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we find Allah again and again and again is telling the believer in the Quran Ya amanu O you who believe when Allah says Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu it's a call a wake up call Oh, you who believe, it's talking to the believer. Pay attention. This is important for you. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. Oh, you who believe. Ati Allah wa ati Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. How many times Allah has mentioned this again and again and again in the Quran? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentioned, for example, in Surah Al-Ahzab, which is the 33rd Surah, in the 36th Ayah, the English meaning, or the English rendition. It is not for a believer. It is not for a believer. Do you have Iman? You say you are a believer. You say you believe in Allah. You say you believe in His religion. It is not for a believer. Man or woman, when Allah and His Messenger have decreed a matter that they should have any option in their decision. And whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger has indeed strayed into plain error. It is not possible that if you believe in Allah and the Messenger that when Allah says when Allah says something in his book when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says something and that has come to us through the traditions the authentic hadith how is it possible if you believe in Allah and if you are a believer that you have any choice oh but oh but I think this Oh, but I think that. How many times we hear from people who call themselves Muslim when they hear what Allah says and when they hear what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, they say, I think this. I think that. But this and but that. Such and such said this and such and such said that. Do you have a choice? If you are a believer, that Allah, Al Khaliq, the Creator, the Provider, the Rabb, the Nourisher, the Sustainer, Allah, who feeds us, clothes us, who created the heavens and the earth, we think we know better than Him. How is it possible if you believe that you will have a choice? So Allah reminds us it's not for a believer, man or woman. When Allah and His Messenger have decreed a matter that they should have any option in their decision. That's it. We know it is from Allah and His Messenger. We have no option but. Sami'na, we hear. Wa'ata'na, we obey. Not like the Jews who said, we hear and we disobey. No, the believer, we hear, O oh Allah, what you say. We hear, O oh Messenger, what you say, and we obey. This is the position of the believer. And 
Allah tells us, O you who believe, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. Now pay attention. Obey Allah. Ati Allah wa ati Rasul and obey the Messenger. And those of you who are in authority. And if you have a dispute, you argue, you disagree concerning any matter, any matter, any matter, refer it to Allah and the Messenger if you believe in Allah and the last day. SubhanAllah brothers and sisters, look at this ayah of the Qur'an. If you are believers in Allah and the last day, we have a disagreement, we have an argument, you have one opinion, I have another opinion. Who has Allah ordered us to refer it to? Huh? Our culture, our traditions, the courts of the unbelievers, the opinions of philosophers to such and such and this and that refer it to Allah and His Messenger go back to the Qur'an and the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam refer it to this if you believe in Allah on the last day and notice that the obedience to the people of authority whether it is your parents, the government, the emir, the khilafa, whoever it may be, obedience to those people in authority is conditional. It is conditional that it is in accordance with obedience to Allah and His Messenger. As the Prophet ﷺ clearly said, there is no obedience to the creation in disobedience to Allah. There is no obedience to the creation in disobedience to Allah. And so we find again and again and again Allah is putting Himself with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when it comes to the issue of obedience. O you who believe, obey Allah and the Messenger. Again and again. Obey Allah and the Messenger. Allah puts Himself and the Messenger in the issue of obedience. Why? Because obeying the Messenger is the same as obeying Allah. There is no difference between what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has ordered and what Allah has ordered. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he did not speak as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Najm. He does not speak of his own desire. It is nothing except an inspiration that is inspired. That Allah revealed the Qur'an and the angel Jibra'il, he brought down the Qur'an and the angel Jibra'il brought down the Sunnah. The Qur'an is revelation. The Sunnah is revelation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said clearly in Surah Al-Hashr, and whatsoever the Messenger gives you, take it. And whatever He forbids you, leave it. Whatsoever the Messenger gives you, take it. And whatsoever He orders you to leave, leave it. As the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that you will find there will come a time when you will find a man reclining on his couch saying meaning he is a, a lazy rich man what you find in the book of Allah take it and what you find in the book of Allah leave it and the Prophet said but what I have made haram is like what Allah has made haram And this is why it is clear to anybody who has one minute piece of intelligence that to deny the hadith, authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, to say we believe in the Qur'an only and we do not believe in the Sunnah, this is kufr, it is disbelief. And whoever makes such a claim is not a Muslim. 
We have been ordered by Allah in the Quran, Surah Al Hashr. Whatever the Messenger orders you with, take it. Whatever he orders you to leave, leave it. What the Messenger has made haram is like what Allah has made haram. And he does not speak of his own desires. It is nothing except a revelation, an inspiration. And also Allah tells us in Surah An Nisa, He who obeys the Messenger has indeed obeyed Allah. He who obeys the Messenger has indeed obeyed Allah. But this issue, brothers and sisters, may Allah have mercy on you, of obeying Allah and obeying the Messenger is a more serious matter still. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He warned us again, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, another verse of the Quran, telling us, O oh, you who believe, ati Allah wa ati Rasul, wa la tubtilu a'malakum, and don't make your deeds null and void what a warning what a warning to us who do not feel shy that when the verses of Allah and his revelation are brought to us when the sayings of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam the authentic sayings of the prophet are brought to us we feel not even shy to turn our backs to walk away to put our own opinions forward in front of Allah and His Messenger. Allah says, O oh, you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger and do not make your deeds null and void. Don't make them worthless by disobeying Allah and the Messenger. <coughs> because by disobeying Allah and His Messenger, you can nullify your deeds. And furthermore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He took an oath He swore He swore by Himself But no by your Lord They can have no faith They cannot have any faith Until they make you Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam A judge in all disputes between them and find no resistance in their hearts against your decision but submit to it with the fullest submission subhanallah this ayah should be an ayah that should make us weep and cry and tremble with fear that Allah negated and denied that those people who do not only Make the messenger a judge. Allah said, you must make the messenger a judge in all your disputes. Mothers, fathers, children, husbands, wives, teachers, taught, rulers, ruled. You do not have faith if you do not make the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a judge in all your disputes. And not only that, it is not sufficient to just agree even to make the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the judge in the dispute. But you must sub submit and have happiness in your heart concerning the judgment of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And from this ayah, many of the scholars have said, they have said, that whoever is displeased with anything that has been revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has gone out from the fold of Islam whoever is displeased with anything that has been revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has left Islam it is disbelief are you happy brothers and sisters with everything in Islam do you love everything in this religion then you have to question your belief, your faith. Are you sad at what Allah orders you? Are you sad at what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa orders you? 
Do you feel heaviness and regret that you have to pray? That you have to fast? That you have to give zakah? That you have to spend your life and your property to make Allah's word the highest? So the Prophet ﷺ, he said that all of my followers, and he mentioned my followers, all of my followers will enter paradise except those who refuse. So the Prophet is talking about people who are his followers. They will all enter paradise except those who refuse. He said, who will refuse Messenger of Allah? Who will refuse to enter paradise? He said, those who obey me will enter paradise and those who disobey me have refused. So, I hope this gives us a clear understanding and a comprehension of this verse of the Quran. Kul in kuntum Allah, If you love Allah, follow me. Follow the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Follow his sunnah, and then Allah will love you. How is it possible for us, if we love Allah and we love His Messenger, that we could put anyone or anything, or the saying of any person above the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? How is it possible that if you say to someone who claims to be a Muslim, "Oh, my Muslim brother," Oh my Muslim sister, don't do that because the Prophet ﷺ said and it is authentically narrated from him and they say my Imam says my Sheikh says my this says my culture says SubhanAllah you claim to love Allah you claim to love his messenger and you put these people in front of Allah and His Messenger? Oh my brothers and sisters, when Abdullah ibn Abbas, the companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came to two people. He found them doing something. He said to them, I heard the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say such and such and this and that. And they replied to him, but we heard Abu Bakr and Umar say, I don't think there is anyone greater in knowledge than Abu Bakr and Umar. If anyone should be blindly followed, and if there is any Imam to be blindly followed, Abu Bakr and Umar are more worthy of it than all the scholars and all the sheikhs put together. Yet when Ibn Abbas came and he mentioned to them the hadith of the Prophet, and these two people said, Oh, we heard Abu Bakr and Umar say, He said, Surely, soon the sky will rain down stones upon you. Because I said, The Messenger of Allah, and you gave me Abu Bakr and Umar. I said, The Messenger of Allah, and you gave me Abu Bakr and Umar. This is why every single one of the Imams, the rightly guided Imams of this Ummah, May Allah be pleased with all of them because they are free from the lies which people have attributed to them. They all of them said, if you find an authentic saying of the Prophet that contradicts my opinion, leave my opinion. Throw it against the wall and follow the authentic saying of the Prophet ﷺ. Who were they to put themselves in front of the Messenger of Allah? And look to what Allah says for those people who are worshippers of other human beings, blind followers of other human beings, followers of politicians, sheikhs, imams, and all the rest of it. Look to these verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah, how He warns the people of their condition on the Day of Judgment. And of mankind are some who take for worship others besides Allah as rivals to Allah they love them as they love Allah 
But those who believe love Allah more than anything else. If only those who do wrong could see when they will see the torment that all power belongs to Allah and that Allah is severe in punishment. When those who were followed disown and declare themselves innocent of those who followed them and they see the torment then all their relations will be cut off from them and those who followed will say if only we had one more chance to return we would disown them as they disowned us thus Allah will show them their deeds as regrets for them and they will never get out of the fire how Allah warns us how he warned us the Jews and the Christians they took their priests and their rabbis and they made their priests and rabbis as gods lords besides Allah why and how did they do that as well of the Sahaba who was a Christian he said oh messenger of Allah we didn't used to worship them and the Prophet said didn't they make halal for you what Allah made haram and you accepted it and didn't they make haram for you what Allah made halal and you accepted it and he said yes we used to do that and the Prophet said that was your worship of them that was your worship of them oh brothers and sisters think about this the Jews and the Christians their priests and their rabbis the book that they have with them their Bible is corrupted and distorted it is a scripture that has been corrupted and distorted yet Allah did still not accept from the Jews and the Christians that they followed their priests and rabbis blindly that when these people said this is halal and this is haram and it contradicted what Allah said and they followed their priests and their rabbis Allah still called them as worshippers of their priests and their rabbis because only Allah is allowed to make something halal or haram who but Allah can make something halal and haram yet today we find the Muslims you say oh my brother and sister Allah has forbidden interest he has forbidden interest he has declared war on those people who deal in riba and they say oh but the Imam in the mosque said subhanallah they put the Imam before Allah from what did he say this from where did he get this who gave him the authority to make halal something which Allah has made haram have we not followed step by step hand span by hand span the ways of the Jews and the Christians as the Prophet said we would sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you will follow the ways of the Jews and the Christians or oh, sorry he said you will follow the way of those who came before you step by step hand span by hand span if one of them fornicated with his mother in the street one of you will do the same and they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, do you mean the Jews and the Christians and the Zoroastrians? And the Prophet said, Who else? Where is it today? Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ati Allah wa ati Rasul. Where is it that people are ready to refer everything to Allah and His Messenger? Where are the people today? Who will not put anyone and anything in front of Allah and His Messenger? Look and see. And there, inshallah, you will find the believers. There you will find the people who really love Allah. There you will find the people who truly love the Prophet. Because as there are people who claim they love Allah, there are people who claim they love the Prophet. They say, we love the messenger. And they exaggerate in praising him. Giving him a status above which that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to any man. 
so that even if you sum to some of them, you will say that the Prophet is a bashar, he is a man, they will say, Astaghfirullah, how can you say it? I have sat with these people myself. But Allah Himself in the Quran calls the Prophet a man, a bashar, like you. But these people claim they love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But where is the following of their sunnah, of the sunnah of the Prophet? Do they believe what the Prophet believed? Do they practice what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam practiced? No brothers and sisters. We find the reality is that most of these people have rather than practicing and following the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we find they have filled their life with innovations. And for those people who love and honor the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they believe in what the Prophet said. And they believe in what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us of. And they have Iman in his guidance. And that it is the best. وَخَيْرُ الْهُدَّى هُدَّى مُحَمَّدٍ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The best way is the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they believe the people who truly love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that his example is the best example. And they defend his Sharia and his guidance with all their strength and all their capacity. They defend his Sharia and they defend his guidance with all their strength and with all their capacity. So look to what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said in a hadith that is narrated by Abdullah bin Mas'ud and it is, have been collected by Muslim in his Sahih. There was never a Nabi, there was never a messenger that Allah raised amongst his Ummah except that he had in his Ummah some Hawariyun, some helpers and Sahaba companions who held fast to his sunnah and followed his commands they were then succeeded by a people who professed what they did not act upon and they did that which they were not commanded to do in other words they did things in the religion they were never asked to do they innovated they introduced new things into the religion new acts of worship they were never commanded to do it and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said so he who makes jihad against them with his hand is a believer and the one who makes jihad against them with his tongue is a believer and the one who makes jihad against them with his heart is a believer but beyond that there is not even a mustard seed of iman not a mustard seed's worth of faith because the people who love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam defend his sunnah they defend his sunnah against those people who corrupt it they defend his sunnah against those people who innovate in it these are the people who love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and look my brothers and sisters to what the companions of the Prophet the attitude they took to those people who innovated in something even small even something small and let me read to you an athar an incident from the time of the companions it's an authentic incident it's an authentic narration it's been collected by a tabarani and a darami both of them and it's authentic Amr bin Salma narrated we used to sit at the door of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud before the morning prayer so that when he would come out we would walk with him to the mosque let's just stop there briefly and look at this beautiful manners of these people 
who used to sit at the door of the scholar Abdullah ibn Mas'ud before the Fajr prayer. They wouldn't come and knock on his door and disturb. They would sit and wait to get the benefit of knowledge. One day Abu Musa al-Ashari came to us and he said, Has Abu Abdurrahman, that's the kunya of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, has he come out yet? And we replied, no. So he sat down with us until he came out. And when he came out, we all stood along with him. So Abu Musa said, O oh Abu Abdurrahman, I have just seen something in the mosque which I deem to be evil, but, and all praises for Allah, I did not see anything except good. So he saw something which he thought was evil, even though it had the appearance of being good. And he says to him, Abdullah ibn Masood says, What did you see? And Abu Musa replied, If you live, SubhanAllah, from your door to the mosque, if you live, you will see it. In the mosque, I saw people sitting in circles, awaiting the prayer. In each circle, they had pebbles in their hands, and a man would say, Repeat Allahu Akbar 100 times. So they would repeat it a hundred times. Then he would say, repeat, La ilaha illallah a hundred times. So they would repeat it a hundred times. Then he would say, repeat, subhanallah a hundred times. So they would say it a hundred times. Ibn Mas'ud said, what did you say to them? And Abu Musa said, I didn't say anything. Instead I waited to hear your view or what you declared. Then we went along with him until he came to one of those circles and stood up and said what is this I see you doing they replied oh Abu Abdurrahman these are pebbles on which we are counting takbir tahleel and tasbih and he said to them rather count up your evil deeds for I assure you that none of your good deeds will be lost woe be to you O Ummah of Muhammad how quickly you head into destruction these are the companions of the Prophet who are widespread these are his clothes which have not yet declared his bowl is unbroken by him in whose hand is my soul either you are upon a religion better guided than the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam or you are opening the doors of misguidance and they said oh Abu Abdurrahman by Allah we only intended good and he said to them how many there are who intend good but do not achieve it indeed Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to us a people will recite the Quran but it will not pass beyond their throats by Allah I do not know but perhaps most of them are from you and then he left and Amr ibn Salma said we saw most of those people fighting against us alongside with the Khawarij brothers and sisters why did I mention this? what were these people doing? they were sitting in the mosque is that good action or not? It's good to sit in the mosque and wait for the prayer. And they were making dhikr of Allah, a most excellent action. But Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was angry with them. And he said to them, O Ummah of Muhammad, how soon you are destroyed. And he says, either you are upon a religion better guided than that of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, or you are opening the doors of misguidance. And of course, they are not on a religion better guided than the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa but they open the doors of misguidance why? because they were making dhikr in a way that was not taught by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa they were sitting in circles they were counting with pebbles and they were saying say la ilaha illallah say Allahu Akbar say and the Prophet never taught anyone to make dhikr like this this enraged Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. This Abdullah ibn Mas'ud called the destruction of the Ummah. He 
He called it the destruction of the Ummah. O oh, Ummah of Muhammad, how soon you are destroyed. He spoke as if they were already destroyed. Why? Because they had thought that they could think to worship Allah with a way other than the way taught by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. People who love the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam contend themselves with what the Messenger did and what the Messenger taught. They do not innovate because innovation is in direct contradiction to obedience to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to following his sunnah. Because indeed for every new thing that is introduced into the religion, the sunnah is destroyed. When they were counting with their pebbles, or as people today count with their beads, sitting in their circles, they had destroyed the sunnah of counting on the fingers, sitting on your own. The sunnah had been destroyed and the innovation had arisen. These are not people who love Allah. These are not people who love the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are the destroyers of the religion. And look what Imam Malik, he said. He who innovates an innovation in Islam, regarding it as something good, has claimed that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has betrayed his trust to deliver the message. The person who innovates in the religion, thinking they are doing something good, they have claimed that the Prophet ﷺ has betrayed his trust and failed to deliver his message. As Allah has said, Al Yoma Akmaltu Lakum Dinakum, Wa Atmamtu Alaikum Ni'mati, Wa Raditu Lakumul Islam Adina. And whatever was not part of the deen then, it is not part of the religion today. I say that brothers and sisters because there are many people who do things and I will mention it explicitly like celebrating the birthday of the Prophet and they claim they love the Prophet and they insult and abuse those people who refuse to celebrate his birthday and who in defending the Sunnah and the Sharia warn people against this evil and wicked act and they say you do not love the Prophet did Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Abu Bakr, Uthman, Ali, Umar, Abu Huraira, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Mu'ad ibn Jabal, Aisha, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein, did they fail to love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Because none of them ever celebrated his birthday. Subhanallah. But I ask you to judge from the book of Allah and from the teaching of the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who are the people who love Allah? Who are the people who love the messenger? Who are the people who love his sunnah? Loving the Prophet is not some emotional reaction that you say. Loving the Prophet is following his sunnah, defending his sharia. Do you think you can worship Allah in a better way? Did the Prophet forget to tell us something? Did he forget? Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, celebrate my birthday. He forgot, did he? He failed to teach us properly how to worship Allah, how to honor Him and love Him and respect Him. If you believe so, you meet Allah with that on the Day of Judgment. But as for me, then I know which group of people I want to be with on the Day of Judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them. He talks about them. In Surah Al-Furqan. And remember the day. The day when the heavens shall be rent asunder with clouds. And the angels will be sent down with a grand descending. The sovereignty on that day will be the true sovereignty belonging to the most gracious Allah. And it will be a hard day for the disbelievers. And remember the day when the wrongdoer will bite at his hand and he will say, Oh, would that I had taken a path 
with the messenger. Ah, woe to me! Would that I had never taken so and so as a friend. He indeed led me astray from the reminder, this Quran, after it had come to me. And shaitan is to man ever a deserter in the hour of need. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.